So hello, welcome to Blake's Den. Quite a windy day here today. Uh, we're doing something a little different today. I'm doing a product review on the P-Scan vehicle diagnostics tool. So Philip from P-Scan has sent me this to try out uh, and give an honest review of. Um, just being completely open, no money's changed down. He hasn't paid me to do this review. At the same time, I haven't paid for the product, so it's just... Uh, an honest review from me of using the P-Scan on my car. Uh, you probably see, will have seen my videos where I've used the T300, so I'm going to compare the T300 device to P-Scan. So I think the first thing to do is get inside the car and we'll get this all plugged in. So firstly, a bit about P-Scan. As the website says, it's a diagnostic tool for Rovers, MGs and Land Rovers. Um, it's a fully supported piece of software. Unlike the, the T300, which is just a Chinese copy of a tool which went out of production a while ago. Um, this is a support forum for this as well. Um, and and yeah, it's just constantly being developed, so, so that works in its favour. Um, to install it, it's really straightforward. There's a full set of installation instructions on the website. I've done all that already, so now I need to connect it to the car. So... The diagnostics port on the Mini is on the left hand side of the steering column. So cable looks like OBD2 but it isn't. So I'll just reach down there and plug it in. Quite difficult to plug in because you've got to do it blind but there we are that's plugged in. And then turn the ignition on. The ignition's now on. And there's so yeah, there's a green light flashing on there. That green light will um, say it's ready to connect. So if I just plug that in on the USB on the computer. So that's plugged in now. So um, if I go back to the folder, so this is the installation folder. I'll load P-Scan loader and the product works. So select which language you want, which port it's connecting on, which it detects automatically. Yeah, it says the port's open, that's okay. Interface is okay. So now we're in. So I'll maximise that so it's easier for you guys to see it. So first thing to do, when maybe look at petrol engine. On the Mini, it's a MEMS 2J. So we'll start looking at that. So it checks the connection to the MEMS unit. This takes a couple of seconds whilst it does its thing. So now we're logged in successfully. So the information brings up the identifier for the ECU. We can also read the error codes. So on this one, you'll see that um, we've got an ambient air temperature sensor and an oil temperature sensor. The Mini doesn't have those sensors, so you'll always get those error codes. It also tells you historic error codes as well, which is basically the air temperature sensor being too low and too high and the oil temperature sensor being high. Um, we can also go and view the live data, which is really interesting. So, um, if you, um, it brings up a table here and you can, um, so sort of, if you press plus, it brings up, uh, the parameter, which you want to monitor down the side. So a lot of these, again, don't apply to the, the mini because things like aircon motor and things like that, um, vehicle speed, coolant temperature. So. So I've just brought up a few there, so you can see um, that I've got an oil temperature of 50. I've been running the car for a bit. Um, ignition switch is on. Cooling temperature is also 50. And the throttle poten potentiometer voltage, this one's quite interesting. So if I press the accelerator pedal now, with the car turned off, so that's fully down, and I'm getting 3.7 volts, and I lift it back up, and it's got 0.5 volts. Um, also as well, if I start this, we should see some of these parameters changing. So let's just go for a start. So you can see we've now got the engine RPM. Uh, what else can we do? Intake temperature, uh, ambient air temperature, we don't have that one. Fuel temperature, we don't have. Battery voltage, it's a good one. So uh, 
where's that one just gone battery voltage of a 14.2 volts so no the alternators um, working fine camshaft signal okay so there's no faults there uh, crank position obviously that one's constantly updating that's showing you where the timing's doing on the engine injector firing interval So it's saying it's firing every 1.3 milliseconds at the moment. Um, but yeah, we'll just see some of these parameters change. So if we look focus on the engine speed, so if I rev the engine, you can see that change. See the oil temperatures change as the engine warms up. Cooling temperatures also going up. And I lift it off. Yeah, and it's gone back down to sort of a, an idle just above 1000 so that's that's really good um there's loads of different things you can put in here um security interface uh what the fuel pump's doing so um yeah i'm really impressed by this so there's a couple of real world tests i want to do you can use the tool to program um a new ECU to the car because that has to be linked to the 5AS immobiliser and you can also add new key fobs so I've got a spare key fob and I've got a spare ECU so I'm going to have a play around with that now so one thing I want to do is um, program another immobiliser fob when I bought the car it only ever came with one fob so if we go back to the home screen um, and go to alarm immobiliser body 5AS which is the system on the mini we can then go through and start programming the immobilizers. So there's a set of instructions you need to follow. Um, the first one is you've got to test that the horn works. So the unit connects. Give it a couple of seconds and then the horn goes. So we know, we know that's working. Uh, yeah, I've got the ignition on. So we're going to start fob learning. Uh, you need to have both the fobs available and you've got to press the unlock button until the horn goes. So let's see what happens. So start fob learning. Warning all immobilizers will be deleted. Press again to confirm. So wait six seconds. Wait again whilst it does its thing. Still connecting to the 5AS. Right, 5AS is now listening for immobiliser fobs. Press the lock button on the first fob once per second until the horn sounds. Typically eight presses are required, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nothing happened there. Keep going. Right, okay, so that's connected now. So my other fob is actually on the key ring of ignition, so I'm gonna press the button on that as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there we are. So that should have programmed them both now, so we'll stop the fob learning finished switch ignition off and then on again so that's ignition off ignition on and that should do its thing so now let's give us a test if I go to start the car now it should not start because I haven't disconnected the immobilizer so 
yeah, that's the key turning, nothing's happening. If I use my new fob now, press the immobiliser button, it should go. Fantastic. So that's a really good real world test. Uh, really happy with that. Uh, next test I want to do is try and program another ECU to the car. So uh, I'll do that now. So I've just lifted the ECU out there. That's the existing one in the car. This is a spare one I've got. Bought off eBay. Um, it's got the same numbers on as the existing one. So I think it works, but I've never actually tried it. So just unplug the red connector, unplug the black connector, plug this in, and we'll get back in the car and see what the P-Scan tool says. So that uh, other ECU has been fitted now. So if I go to information, I'm not sure whether that's any different or not. Um, but basically, if I go and try and start the car now, so do me immobilise, I go to start, nothing happens. No communication at all. So um, we need to relink this ECU to the immobiliser. So if we learn the EMS code, this function attempts to synchronise the EMS code with the ECU. Um, the immobiliser needs to be in a disarmed state for this function to succeed. So we've disarmed the immobiliser, press the learn EMS code to proceed. EMS learning code success. So turn off ignition, exit from diagnostic session and wait 30 seconds. So um, let's wait 30 seconds and come back to it. So by the magic of YouTube, that's been 30 seconds, probably a little bit more actually. So let's see if the new ECU works. So we'll go off to start. There we are. That's working fine. That's on the, the the other ECU, the spare ECU that I have. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to swap back to the original ECU and relearn that code and check that that works too. So as a final test, we're back to the ECU which was on the car at the start. Uh, I've relearned that. So let's see if it works. There we are. Fantastic. So yeah, really pleased with that. So I've come in the garage to film a conclusion there. Um, obviously I've already got the T300 tool and I've used that successfully. You can see in my previous videos. Uh, but the P-Scan tool I'm really impressed with. Um, the advantage of the P-Scan is there's a support forum for it. You can talk to the developer and it's constantly evolving. Also works on many different rovers, uh, the many different MEM systems. Um, the T300 does work for multiple vehicles as well, but you've got to have the right cable. Looking online, the T300 sells for, there's one on eBay at the moment, a bike now for 130. I mean, it's 25 pound or so for the cable, the MEMS cable. The P-Scan is 156 pound. So price-wise, there's not much in it. Um, you might initially think, ooh, that's, that's expensive. I think of them both as a tool. So you'd pay that money for an air compressor or you'd pay that money for some of the part of a well there or for a decent socket set. If your car's not working and you plan to keep your car forever, like I'm planning to keep my Mini, then this is no different to just buying a decent set of tools. It's just, it's a tool just an electronic tool, not a mechanical tool. So yes, I think I would recommend it. I like the user interface. Very friendly, very easy to use. Uh, the installation was really straightforward and the product does what it says on the tin. So yeah, fairly happy with that. So just to recap, in case you missed it at the start of the video, um, I've been sent this for free by Philip at P-Scan. Uh, no money has changed hands. He's not paying me to do this review. Um, it's purely my own opinion. Um, when you buy this, you might want the T300, you might want the P-Scan. You've just got to make your own decision. Um, you've got to choose what's best suited to your needs. The T300 is portable. You can take it anywhere you want and plug it in. It doesn't need an external power supply. The P-Scan, you need to take a laptop with you. So, 
depends depends on how you want to work so um, but my recommendation is yes i like this and i would recommend it to other mini owners and other owners of, of rovers so thank you for watching i hope you've liked this review Some, something a bit different um, but i get asked quite a lot of questions really about diagnostics and swapping ecus over so i hope you found this interesting so stay tuned to blake's den uh, for more videos and don't forget to follow us on instagram